at this point, both teams know each other. You know, you know the sets. They can call out our plays. We can call out our plays. It's about execution. You know what I mean? So down the stretch, um, you know, we got to box out. I got to box out. Um, we got to execute. You know, we're a team that's closed out games like that all season long. So um, this is a tough one, but we got to bounce back. That's why we fought all season to get home court. All right, now it's a party. Monica McNutt is with us now. First things first, Monica, and I mean first things first. Uh, this is uh, this is paramount. This is really important. This is going to say a lot about you and whether or not our relationship can continue moving forward. Okay. Did you make your bed this morning, and do you make it every morning? Yes, and yes. I, I knew it. I knew it. See, it's that's and that's why you are where you are in life. That's why you. you that's why you like. That's why you, Monica. Not I, mean, I mean, do you know why he's asking? You. Do you know why? why he's asking? This whole Dwayne Casey, Dwayne you're, Casey, you're du Dwayne uh, Casey's Kisses coach. Yeah, yeah. Ask prospects if they make their bed. If they say yes, that lets him know about their level of uh, attention to detail and their level of organization. And those who don't make their bed, Casey might say, aren't as organized, aren't as focused as those who do. No lies detected. Interesting. No lies detected. It's an interesting theory. I think that's a, a little harsh as a theory. I will share my theory. I don't like getting into an unmade bed. So like when I, I'm, I'm big on like rest and sleep and the whole thing. So when I walk into my room, it's more like, oh, I'm here to rest, unwind. Uh, unmade bed is like unnerving to me at the end of the day. See, oh, that's, that's good. That's a good right answer. There. And people yeah. Yeah. and people who tell me uh, who really know who really know uh, beds say you need to upgrade the sheet game to linen linen sheets. Uh, now, hearing that during a heat wave sounds very uh, unsettling, but they say it will change your life. And if you iron your sheets too, iron your sheets, it really is great. I don't right. know. I iron, just, I iron pillowcases. I haven't gotten to iron sheets, but I just ordered these microfiber sheets that are supposed to be cooling that I'm excited to try. So. Nice. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Have the Milwaukee Bucks, <laughs> awkward transition, have the Milwaukee Bucks cooled off <laughs> the Phoenix Suns? No, no, really, seriously. I thought yesterday I told Mike this. I thought if Phoenix won this game, series is over in five. Now I think the series is going seven. What do you see from, uh, what do you see going forward these next three games if it gets to these next three games? Phoenix led for, I believe, precisely 37 minutes and 52 seconds, if I got that number right, right? So, listen, we were this close to that. We were this close to the absolutely legendary performance by Devin Booker literally carrying that squad because I think Jay Crowder scored in double figures in the third quarter. To that point, it had literally been booked. I agree with you. I do think that this series is going seven. I picked it to go seven and go to Phoenix um, initially, though. But I think what we saw last night was the formula that we've seen from Chris Middleton through the playoffs, except it came a game late. Statistically, his game three performances have been a whole 10 points better, and I believe he's averaging like 11.3 rebounds in those games over the course of the postseason. His last game three obviously didn't meet that bar, but then he goes off for 40, and we understand why his numbers from games three to game seven in that Brooklyn series were way higher than they were if you include the first two games. So the question for me with the Bucks continues to be, will they stick to it? Because even yesterday, I didn't think Phoenix played poorly outside of Chris Paul's five turnovers and their 17 turnovers as an entire unit. But you had Giannis pulling up for two threes. Why? For what? You've been like flawless <laughs> in the Irish <laughs> What are you doing? No question. Uh, speaking of what are you doing, and, and for those that don't know, if you don't know, you should know, and, and now you know, uh, Monica McNutt is a part of uh, NBC Sports uh, Olympic coverage. Uh, so looking forward to seeing you hold it down. And the story uh, is perhaps more interesting than you thought it would be as it relates to Team USA men's basketball, um, given those losses to first Nigeria, then Australia, who they see again this weekend, uh, as well as Spain. But then he bounced back against Argentina. So what is your level of concern through three exhibition games uh, for Team USA as we get closer to Tokyo? Guys, Team USA had not one, not two, not three, four, 
four whole days of practice before they took the court versus Nigeria. And so, yes. Thank you, Monica. As Americans, we are accustomed to, at least in our mind, because if you go back and look at some of the numbers, I don't know if it's as much of a steamroll as we have now imagined it to be. We're used to Team USA being dominant. I get it. But to me, I think of my experience when it comes to UConn women's basketball in particular. You set the bar so that everybody can come and chase you. I don't think that other teams around the world improving is an indictment on Team USA. So for me, I'm not concerned yet. They're still missing three guys. I think Holiday could be a big deal in terms of defending and how it's called in the international game. And obviously, Book is a bucket. And if you get game four, Chris Middleton, he's also a bucket too. So you got to give them time. I know that we're all spoiled by Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at water. It was Super Bowl. But you still have to give a team time to gel and understand their roles as a unit. Uh, when you come back from Tokyo, uh, let me know how you feel about Greg Popovich. That, that, just, that just has an aside. Just let me know how you feel about <laughs> your interactions with him. Uh, okay. But my last question for you uh, involves Candace Parker. We talked about it a bit yesterday, uh, being a cover woman uh, on a video game. Now, uh, on one, in one sense, you can say, hey, this is a video game. It's not a big deal. Uh, we tend to think it's a big deal. What say you, Monica McNutt? It's a huge deal. And I think part of the growth of the women's game, I've seen it with the WNBA, it should expand out to the NWSL, the NWHL, whatever other sports women are playing, because there are leagues for just about every sport. The big jump in terms of our sports conversation as a country, to me, that will signify that women's sports are being respected in the way they should, is when they become a part of the water cooler conversation. And this, to me, becomes a part of the water cooler conversation. It's still a moment because she's the first. Um, but it is a big deal because she is the first. Now, hopefully moving forward, she won't be the only, and I don't expect a woman to grace the cover every single year, but I think 2K and EA or whoever runs this video game understood the magnitude of this moment and the time that we're in right now. I continue to say, you don't have to love your local WNBA team. You don't even have to be a basketball enthusiast. But the same way that I pulled up to the Nats parade when they won, the Capitals parade when they won, have gone to check out both of those games, and I can't quite tell you who's on those rosters, it's the same way we consume sports because it is a social thing to do. And so I will be thrilled when I think women's games are being looked at in that same vein. And whether you like a team or a player or not, you can have a conversation because it's part of the sports lexicon. Just to add to that real quick, Monica, um, I said this about Kamala Harris uh, when she made history, Vice President Kamala Harris, when she made history. I, I think... Candace Parker being on, on the cover of 2K is bigger for boys than it is for girls and women. Uh, because, like my son, and he's met Candace, so he, he loves Candace, probably has a crush on her. But, um, you know, he plays 2K and he plays with Candace. Mm -hmm. and, but he loves 2K. So I think the more young boys can see and, and, and uh, women's players and women's athletes this, in the same vein and on the same status and same pedestal, if you will, as men's athletes, the more that level of equality, if you will, or, or equity, even if you will, uh, will start to kind of just be normalized within our culture, if that makes sense, you know? So I think yeah. it's, it's, it's big for the boys, the, the kids that are buying these games to see Candace Parker uh, on the cover uh, of, of, of a franchise like NBA 2K. Monica, if it were up to me, you'd be on the front of NBA 2K, <laughs> especially mm. after knowing that you make your bed every day. So thank Please. you so much for falling through every and dropping day. knowledge. Uh, we love you. Congratulations again on being a part of uh, of our Olympic coverage at NBC. We look forward to, to hearing you on the call. So thanks so much. We'll talk to you later on the other Peace side of vacation. Can't wait. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.